Hey everybody, the Gaming Guru 51 here, and welcome back to more Pokemon Crystal. In the last episode, we completely ruined the date that the gym leader of Cerulean City was currently going on, and because of that, she is now back at the gym. In this episode, it is time to take on the gym, but first of all, I have to make sure that my team is prepared, and Flowey will actually get some use out of this gym, so let's go ahead and give him the spotlight. Glub, I'm first, come and get me. Well, theoretically, I didn't really have to fight you first. I could have fought the other trainer first. But hey, I guess you will have to do. Now, Flowey is going to be amazing in this gym because of the Petal Dance. That will do quite a bit of damage to the opponent, and it will be really nice. Of course, I will use it sparingly because of the added effect of uh, Confusion, so I have to make sure that doesn't happen. However, Sludge Bomb should be able to do the damage we need to take on these lower level trainers, because I don't think they will prove too much of a threat here. And we have a Seedra. Hopefully Seedra goes down with one hit from a Sludge Bomb. I would expect to have that happen because it's level 35, only 13 levels lower than us. So this should go down pretty... Well, actually, I don't know. Yeah, I, you know, after thinking about it, I didn't think that was going to work out in my favor too well. But the Twister is going to connect, and it's not going to really do much of anything. But we're going to go for the Petal Dance now, because... It's safe to go for the Petal Dance when there's only two Pokemon left, because you're guaranteed two hits with Petal Dance. And I'm expecting Petal Dance to one hit kill all of the water types because it's super effective damage and same, and same type attack bonus. Ugh, that's a mouthful. But unfortunately, the animation is a slow one to go through, so I apologize if we see it too many times. But hey, it should be pretty exciting having Flowey gain the spotlight. Now, what would be cool is if I had a berry that prevented confusion. I might actually have one, the bitter berry, I think? I'll have to check my inventory just to see if that is the case. And if so, I can equip it to Flowey, and that way he won't get confused. Eh, I didn't think so. Maybe I have one in the item PC. Who really knows? Don't let my element sw elegant swimming unnerve you. Okay. I mean, this is a gym, after all, and all I want is a gym badge, so... It shouldn't be too bad. What Pokemon do you have? Ooh, you have a Sea King! Well, that's pretty neato. Level 35, what a respectable level to have one at as well. I mean, of course, we're still faster, and we get the Petal Dance off. If this doesn't knock you out, I will be highly disappointed, but I definitely expect this to knock you out. Thank you very much. Get out of here, please. And what is your final Pokemon? Another Sea King? Yep, sure enough. I don't know. Sea Kings are kind of pathetic, actually. I think they have decent speed at best, but, I mean, I think they're mainly f uh, physical, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. I could be wrong, though. But I think they rely on their physical attacks rather than their special attacks, which in this case is not that good because water types moves are special. Oh, you calmly disapposed. Disapposed. <laughs> I was going to say disappointed, but... Sorry about being away, let's get on with it. What are you talking about? I could just talk to you and then we could just get right on with the battle here. You're not away at all. Alright, Diana, what do you got for us? A Golduck? Well, that's pretty cool. Golduck is a nice Pokemon. Level 37, that's a pretty high level. But of course, the Petal Dance is the more reliable move that we have right now. I'm still debating if I want to teach... Well, no, I really shouldn't teach a Giga Drain because it only has 5 PP and it's weaker. So, Petal Dance is definitely the better move for what I need it for right now. But there we go. I give up. You're the winner. I appreciate that. Now it is time to take on the gym leader of Cerulean City. What a nice pause there. Let's go. I was expecting you, you pest. You may have a lot of Johto gym badges, but you better not take me too lightly. My water type Pokemon are tough. Huh. Alright, let's see if that is in fact the case. Actually, Misty is going to be a pretty formidable opponent it's with her levels, for sure. She's going to lead things off with a Golduck, level 42. Water type with the moves, Surf, Disable, Psych Up, and Psychic. Level 42 is a pretty respectable level, even better than Koga, or Janine, Koga's daughter, who had really low levels for a gym leader. Misty does not. She has pretty comparable levels to ours. And it even has Psychic, which is kind of cool. Well, at least for this Golduck, anyway. Will this be able to knock out a level 42 Golduck? Yes, it does. Cool stuff. 
So I'll only be able to use Paddle Dance twice before I have to switch out, because I'm not risking the confusion in this fight at all. Your next Pokémon is a Lapras. Eh, do I want to stay in? I think I will. Show, show. So she has a Lapras, level 44, Water Ice type with the move Surf, Parasong, Song, Blizzard, and Rain Dance. Parasong Song is a bit of an interesting move, actually. When used, both Pokémon will faint in three turns unless they switch out or they faint beforehand. And wow, you didn't do it. Oh, good, we got one more use of Petal Dance. Nice. Doesn't really happen that often, but when it does, it is definitely welcome, especially when Lapras misses the Blizzard. It's a very powerful Ice-type move that has a chance of missing. I think it's 70% accurate. I don't really remember. Your next Pokemon is the one I would rather have Flowey for. Uh, who do I want to use for this? Cinder's going to be a really bad choice, actually. You know, I'll go for it. Her Ace, Starmie, level 47, Water Psychic-type with the move Surf, Confuse Ray, Recover, and Ice Beam. So this thing has its coverage. Psychic? Does it? Yeah, no, it doesn't even have Psychic. I'm dumb. That's exactly why I'm complaining. This thing doesn't even have Psychic. What a pathetic thing. And so close. This will definitely take me out. But the fact that it doesn't have Psychic is not that bad because it does have Surf and Ice Beam, which is a really powerful combination to begin with. And wow, that didn't even knock it out, really. Wow. This is going to go by a lot easier than I thought. I didn't think that it would live a freaking Surf. That's crazy. And your final Pokemon is Quagsire. Oh, Flowey, you're going to end things off with this. So, Quagsire, level 42, water type with the water ground type. Wow. With the move Surf, Amnesia, Earthquake, and Rain Dance. Yeah, if you have a freaking grass type, this thing is going downtown to the town land of towns. Seriously. It's pretty bulky in its physical defenses, and water ground is a really nice typing. However, it only has one weakness, and it's a really, well, not really bad one, but just one weakness. And there we go, we defeated Misty. You really are good. I'll admit that you are skilled. Here you go, it's Cascade Badge. Freaking nice, guys. We get the Cascade Badge. Sweetness. And are there many strong trainers in Johto? Like you, I mean? I'm going to travel one day, so I can battle some skilled trainers. And we don't get a TM from you. How unfortunate. But there we go, you guys. That is the Cerulean City Gym. A lot of pauses in this episode, I have no idea. But we are not done quite yet. Um, there are two things that I want to do before we end things off here. Uh, who can I deposit away? Who's level 49? I'm going to get rid of... Uh, not get rid of Blossom, that's dumb. I'm going to deposit you because I want to take out Slave again. Because we are going to do two things, as I mentioned before. We're going to give the machine part back to the people in the power plant to restore the power to the power plant. And then we are going to go to Lavender Town to claim our prize for doing so. Because whether you agree or not, it is actually required. So... Yeah, this whole mission with the machine part is required, and we have to do it, so... It's not too bad, though. We got this in the bag. So, since there's no real way to get there except by traveling there, we can't exactly fly to the route before the cave, or before Rock Tunnel. So we have to take the long way around. Which may or may not be the long way, maybe the short way, actually. Who really knows? And I need to learn how to speak, or at least know what I'm going to say before I say them. Because, clearly, I have no idea what I have been saying half the time. Clearly, for those of you who know or watch my videos, you know that I have problems speaking faster than I can process. Because that's exactly what happens. But anyways, here we are on Route 10 once again. We're going to go jump inside this house. And since we got the machine part, we're going to talk to the guy who will threaten to use his zap cannon, whatever that is. I don't even want to think about it. And talk to you. Ah, yeah. That's the missing part from my beloved generator. You found it. Wow, thanks. Here, take this TM as a reward, and we get TM07, which coincidentally is Zap Cannon. Zap Cannon is a really powerful move. It's automatically going to paralyze the opponent. However, 50% chance of missing definitely puts not making it to use the most useful thing. But there we go. We have to beef up our security presence. Yeah, I guess so. But now that we have done that, let's go ahead and fly with our good old Batro and head to Lavender Town. I really don't want to go through Rock Tunnel, so flying is the way to go here. And we're going to go inside this building 
And we're going to talk to that one guy, which is right here. Let's see what you got to say. Ah, so you're the Jamie who solved the power plant's problem. Thanks to you, I never lost my job. I tell you, you're a real lifesaver. Please take this as my thanks. And we get ourselves the expansion card, which means we can listen to all the radio signals in the Kanto region. Now, that is important for one reason and one reason only. If I can demonstrate, if we go all the way to the end, there's the polka flute. This is going to be useful in waking up that Snorlax that we saw back in Vermilion City. And this is the only way you're able to get back to Pewter, well, not back to Pewter, to get to Pewter City in order to continue on getting the gym badges. So this is required. So if you want to say that Kanto has some sort of story element, I guess technically you're not wrong, but hey, it's crazy. But I think I'm going to save that for the next episode. This Norlax is rather strong. Next time on Pokemon Crystal, we're going to be awakening Snorlax, capturing it maybe, who really knows, and moving on to Diglett's Cave to continue our adventure. So with that being said, everybody, thank you guys so very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time for some more Pokemon Crystal. See you guys then.